adding several recordings together. So far, I have been assuming that you're going to give your lecture or your recording in a single go and that you're going to be able to cut afterwards. But that is not necessarily the case. You can do small recordings that sequentially add up and later on you can paste them together using Camtasia. So I am going to go over the process of doing that in Camtasia during the editing of your video. And the things that we're going to learn how to place in the timeline are screen capture videos, regular digital videos, sounds, images, and later on we're going to spend some time understanding the tracks in the timeline and what are the track dimensions in the viewing area. For that I have started by collecting several files that I would like to incorporate in a single video. From what you can see in this folder I have different types of files. I have a track file which is a Camtasia recording file. I have an mp4 file which is a regular photographic video. I have an AIF which is a sound file for Macintosh. I have a WAV file which is a sound file for Windows. I have a JPEG file and finally a hype cycle PNG file, an image file from Wikimedia. And the reason why I'm showing you all of these is not only to show you the type of media files that you can use for your production, but also to pay a lot of attention to the size of these files as we move forward in our production. So please take a moment to memorize the different file sizes of each one of these files. The very first file, Camtasia recording file, is 162 megabytes. The next video file is 48 megabytes, 42 megabytes, 42 megabytes, and less than 1 megabyte. I am going to start by showing you the project and media files graphic that I showed before. And this is just to remind you that the files that are the heaviest are the video files, the screen capturing files and your regular video files. After that, normally audio files are the second biggest one. And then we have image files and things like that. These two files, the Camtasia project files, the one for PC and the one for Mac, these files are very important because they're going to have inside the editing decisions that we have made throughout our editing sessions. So I am going to close these and I am going to bring Camtasia forward and I am going to import the files and I can do it as I've been doing all along or I can just try a new method and I can go through the menu structure and click import media and then I am just going to select all the files within that folder. So we're going to find in here our Camtasia recording file, the mp4 video file, the two image files, and finally the two audio files. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to save the project file and I am going to name it multiple tracks. It might be possible that you're going to be sharing your project file with other people. So I would always check these. So then click on save. And there it goes. What is happening at this moment is that this file got really big because it's including now all of these files. In other words, Camtasia created a single file that is a composite of the remaining ones and also all the information that you have made through your editing process. Very well, I'm going to start doing some editing of our files and I'm going to start working with all of them over here. Now, I don't have anything specific in mind. Mostly I want to do this in order to demonstrate what is possible inside Camtasia. Basically, I'm going to demonstrate how the program operates when you want to integrate different media files. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is bring this one, the 
Camtasia recording file to the timeline. And once that it is in my timeline, I can start doing small adjustments here and there. One of the things that we have learned is just to place the head somewhere in the timeline, click on the shift key and select different areas that you can trim or you can cut. So I'm not going to cover these anymore. Nonetheless, it is possible that you might want to move things around once that you have done your recording. And in order to do that, you need to bring the head of the program somewhere in your timeline where you would like to make your cut. And at this moment, I'm going to click on the file and I am going to right click and I'm going to split it at the playhead. I'm going to grab another section. Once again, there's no specific reason why I'm doing it over here. It's just to demonstrate how this works. And I'm going to create another split at the playhead over there. What this allows me to do is to grab this part of the video that I isolated and I can move it up to another track and then I can displace it. And when that, that has taken place, I can grab the other part of the video and get it together with this initial part over here. What this is going to allow me to do is to reorder the sequence of the things that I recorded. So I'm going to create another split over here. And now I'm going to drag these outside and I'm going to bring this segment that I cut and I'm going to insert it there. So as you can see within your single recording, you can split things apart and reorder the sequence of your recording by doing the things that I just demonstrated. The next part is to show you how I can incorporate a different video. So I am going to reduce the view size of my current production and I'm going to grab the photographic quality video, the MP4 from over here, and I'm going to bring it to the end of the timeline over here. In other words, Camtasia is going to allow you to edit your screen captures and also regular video. In this case, you can notice that the video is not perfectly fitting the viewing area because we have this black area down here and we have this black area over here. In this case, I think that it would work well because there are no major distractions to the showing of this video. But there's a way to change that if that is desired and, and it is basically done by increasing the size of this video. So I am going to come to this part over here and I'm going to reduce it to 50% so I have a little bit of working area around the viewing area. And I'm going to grab one of these corners and I'm going to expand it. That is going to increase the size of my video so it can fit the entire screen. And if I play at this moment, everything will work just fine. One of the things that you can notice is that now I am losing a little bit of the video on the left and on the right. And for these type of decisions, it is up to you at the time of making your video and knowing what it is that you're showing that this will be a, a reasonable process or not. In the same way, you can select the video, the time lapse video and reduce its size and just show it in a small portion of your viewing area. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing. So let's do this work in another place. I'm going to select this video. I'm going to right click and I am going to delete it from the timeline. I'm going to move to another part of the video of the screen capturing video. And now I'm going to choose to bring my video of photographic quality over here. One thing that is very important to mention is that these videos are placed in different tracks and these different tracks interact with each other in the following way. The track that is at the very bottom over here would be also at the bottom in the viewing area. Imagine sheets of paper and you have one sheet of paper, another sheet of paper, another sheet of paper and when you place them here, they're going to cover each other. They're going to be layering each other 
and the one that is at the top would be the most visible one and the one that is at the bottom will be covered by other things. Let me show you an example. As soon as I move the head on top of where the second video is, that video is going to appear on top of my Camtasia recording. Both of them are there at this moment, but since this one is on top here, it would also appear on top in the viewing area. At this moment we can proceed in the same way as we did before and I am going to select this video, grab one of these corners and I'm going to move it in. And now you can see that we have both videos interacting simultaneously on the screen. I don't know exactly in what instances this will be appropriate for your work but it is important for you to know that this is a possibility and that this program is mostly a set of tools that you are able to utilize in different ways. So as you play these two videos together, this is what is going to happen. Rendering of the video normally takes a long time or a lot longer time than when you produce other types. So your video will remain there and your screen recording will remain underneath that. In the same way that we have added different layers for different recordings, now we're going to add an audio file. And this is for example if you would like to have some introduction music that will start when your video starts. So I'm going to grab it and I am going to put it over here. As you keep on adding files to your production, the number of tracks will keep on increasing. I would like you to use your judgment when it comes to adding many tracks because once that you add too many tracks, your computer will start struggling juggling all the different media. So sometimes it might be good not to create a brand new track with a brand new file, but just to place the file in a track that has already been created and then you limit the number of tracks that you're using. In this case, I'm going to bring it back up. One of the things that is going to determine how many tracks you can manage in an easy way without struggling is the processor speed of your computer. So, for example, what I'm going to do with this audio file is that now that it has been selected, I'm going to split it and I'm going to take this part away and delete it. So now I have my introduction audio and I'm going to drag it all the way to the beginning of my production. Now that I have placed my audio file over there, I am going to go to the transitions option over here and I'm going to select audio fade in and fade out and I'm going to drag these and I'm going to place it there. I'm going to zoom in so we have a better idea of what's happening at this moment. So this is my fading of the video music and it's going to be a slow fading. Probably I'm going to make it a little bit faster so we don't spend a lot of time demonstrating how it works. So here it goes. Okay, now we're going to work on exporting your recording and uploading it to the internet. And there it is, the fading. However, you need to approach these with a little bit of care because music is always very distracting. So you have to use your judgment in order to incorporate music that will not pull away from your presentation. Now I am going to zoom out a little bit and I am going to bring this to the beginning up to here. And I would like to add a fade out. And now I'm going to grab that fade out. And now I'm going to zoom in so it's easier. Now I'm going to grab that fade out and I'm going to increase its size. So the music is just there for a moment and then disappears. Once that this has been done, here it goes. Okay, now we're going to work on exporting your recording and uploading it to the internet. And there it goes. Now what I would like us to do is to momentarily go back to the folder where we have all of our files 
and just to show you that the files have not changed in size at all. That is, as we move forward in the editing process, our original media is not affected at all and everything is being kept in the Camtasia project. Now I'm going to do one more file. I'm going to do an image file and I am going to bring it over here. Actually, I'm going to bring it to this track over here. And there it is. In the same way that it happens that you can manipulate the size of a video, you can also manipulate the size of an image to be different things throughout your recording. You can also expand these and make it a lot bigger than your original size. And in the same way that it has happened before, we're going to have that video over there and then whatever is layered on top of the track is going to appear on top of the viewing area also. And the audio obviously is not visual, so it doesn't play a role in this layering. And then the image disappears. One of the things that we can have in these image files is the same type of zooming in and zooming out behavior that we have for our screen capturing videos. So you have seen me done those zoom ins and zoom outs and I'm going to quickly show you how you can do the same for an image even though later on I'm going to show you in another lesson how to proceed to make those zoom in and zoom out behavior. So here I go. I'm going to grab a zoom in behavior. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to move fairly quickly, so I'm going to tackle this at a later moment. I'm going to increase the scale of these, and I'm going to move it to mass media hype begins. So this will create a typical zoom in behavior. And in the same way it happens with my videos, it can happen with my images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one. I'm going to copy. I'm going to click paste over here and now I am going to move this image over here. Once again, there's a lesson for this later on. This is just to make you aware of what it's possible. And now that this has been placed there, I can create a motion so I can show other parts of my graphic there. And I can come over here, zoom in, graph the initial part of the zoom and make it a lot slower. So the new behavior that we're going to have is going to show all of this work. And there it goes. It is very easy to increase the length of a image file by just grabbing the edge and increasing it. Like that. Very well, so we have reached the end of this part and I'm going to review quickly once again what we have done. The very first thing that we did was to split the video and grab the isolated part and change its location. So that is one of the options that you have. Another option is to continue adding recordings at the end of your production. And this might alter the way that you record things because you might decide to make small recordings and at a later time add them up with Camtasia. You can also add several videos that are going to be laying on top of each other and they will all appear simultaneously in your screen. You can also add a sound file and to that sound file you can include a fade in and a fade out behavior. There it is. So there are many different ways for you to integrate many different files into your productions and you don't necessarily have to go about it by doing a single recording and just cutting little parts of it. This might be a process that involves the inclusion of more media files and that would allow you to achieve better videos.